Hi guys, and welcome back to Mystic Mamas. I'm Dakota, your host today, and I'm gonna be diving into my birth story. Trigger warning, it is a little traumatic, and it is gonna be about preeclampsia, C-sections, and things like that. So if you feel as if you're not ready to hear all about my story, then I would definitely take the time to come back to this episode when you are, or you know, take what resonates and leave what doesn't, but it is a little bit traumatic. Uh, Danielle was actually going to give her birth story first, but we decided to go with me because she's a little busy right now. Also, I just wanna be open and honest and let you guys know that I am a little nervous because Danielle isn't with me. Um, I've started this podcast over about four times, <laughs> but really I am nervous because I feel like it's easier to piggyback off of somebody and I've never spoken to you guys one-on-one. -on -one. And I've never just allowed myself to talk and talk and talk. I feel like I always give space for Danielle as well and as she does for me. But yeah, so it's just a little bit of a different dynamic. And so I am a little nervous, but I wanna get that out of the way because that is what our podcast is all about. It's all about being vulnerable, honest with you guys. And if you're watching the video or see any of our clips, I'm also not wearing makeup. Last night was a very rough night for me and my family and my baby. She woke up like, I'm not kidding you. I've said this before in the past and I was over exaggerating, but now I'm not over exaggerating. She woke up every 30 to 45 minutes last night. She has this like really wet cough and I don't completely know what's going on, but I was just trying to have so much compassion for her because I know when I was a sick little baby or a girl, I just remember my mommy always being there for me and having so much patience and love for me. And so I want to be that for her. I want to be that mommy for her in all aspects of her life. But really when you're sick, you know, you don't want to be kicked down when you're sick or Obviously, you know, I'm not going to kick a baby down when they're sick anyway, but I just want to be that great mommy for her during this time. And so I've been even debating recording this podcast today because I was just so exhausted and my brain hasn't been right. I've been in this very res resistant state where I just have given myself all the excuses lately to not do this podcast today. And I also know that I'm giving myself all these excuses because I truly am really scared to tell my story. If you did listen to the last podcast, you'll know that I battled with a lot of anxiety and depression, but mainly I still fight this anxiety on a day-to-day -day basis. It's some days it's worse and some days I feel like I conquered it. And so I'm still battling with that, but it really got brought up within my pregnancy. And so that's another high stake, but I just feel like with this anxiety, it comes this like fear of not being enough. And I know that I need to work through that fear and I need to work through all of my limiting and negative belief patterns that I have created within these past nine months or so, you know, nine months of being postpartum and then nine months of pregnancy, well, seven months of pregnancy, but you guys understand what I'm saying. It's like, I almost like rewired myself negatively then positively during that time and so I'm really just trying to freaking knock down all those bad wirings and get back to who I truly know I am which is a limitless being a soul living a human experience you know and yeah all that to say that I am nervous and I've been fighting all of this due to resistance but the resistance that's really came from it all is the fact that like I keep questioning if I did have this traumatic birth and I also want to let you guys know that I haven't told anyone my story, so I may cry during this and I feel very vulnerable and um, scared because uh, I just went through a lot and for me to have to go and think about everything I freaking went through is heavy for me as it would be for anyone who goes through anything traumatic but I just want to share my story because I know there's some women out there who are feeling the exact same way and I just wanna let you know that your feelings and everything that you went through is valid. Not all births are traumatic, but if you had a traumatic birth and you feel like you did, then you did and that's, that's valid and that's all you need to believe. And I'm telling you this because I truly feel like I go back and forth in my head like, was it even that bad? Was it, was it not that bad? Like. I feel like it wasn't that bad. Maybe I'm over exaggerating, but honestly, I, it was traumatic for me and that should be enough. But now I'm rambling, so let me get fully into my story. 
And again, if you listen to the last episode, um, I was battling a lot of anxiety and depression and up until the point of my 30 week checkup, I went in and they told me that I had super high blood pressure. And I think I said this wrong the last time on the podcast, but it was like high. It was like 200 over 180. And they told me to immediately get admitted. But when I sat down to get my blood pressure, cause you know, initially when you go into these doctor's offices, you sit down you get your blood pressure and it's like that first nurse. And then you go into the back room. Well, I went into the back room and the doctor's like, well, the nurse practitioner at that time, she was like, yeah, we think he may admit you, your blood pressure is really high and you do have preeclampsia. And I was just like in total shock because I am only 30 weeks. I felt like at that time I had so much more to dive deep into my fears. I had all these fears for birth. Obviously the scariest one, death, right? But also I was scared I could lose my baby or something could go wrong, you know, all of the bad things. And I was just trying to really hold on to this like positive aspect as well, because, you know, you want to do that in these types of situations. But I was holding on to the aspect of that. But then she told me I had preeclampsia and that I'd probably get admitted and I couldn't help but to break down. I initially broke down so hard that I was shaking really badly. And then the actual doctor comes in and he goes, yeah, mama, like we're gonna have to admit you, you need to go to the hospital um, and we'll let you know that they're coming, just inform your family and you know, all of the things. And I was like, okay. Um, so I get in my car and the very first thing I do is ball my eyes out, call my sister because my boyfriend, Fred, he was out of town working and he was three hours away. And so in my head, I'm like, wow, am I really about to go in my birth without him? Like he, he's supposed to be here with me. Like it was like everything at that moment that I felt I was, I don't know, holding on to in a sense, because they tell you, right. If, if you've been pregnant before, they tell you to not have any expectations pretty much just to allow and surrender to what is, because the more expectations you have, the more resistance you have within your birth. And so pushing out the baby or having your child can be a more exhausting experience than if, if you were to just allow whatever is to come your way, right? And now I understood that. I completely understood that. But I didn't think I would have to be thinking about it at 30 weeks. I thought I would still have 10 more weeks to go through all these fears and all my thoughts. And then I thought if I was gonna have, you know, a birth at 40 weeks where you're supposed to, or more or less, right? But around that time, I thought like, okay, then, you know, then if I have to have a C-section, I could surrender. Then if I had to, I don't know, do whatever, get an epidural or whatever, then I would do it during that time. But it was like, I didn't, I didn't want to surrender to the fact that I had to have my baby at 30 weeks, which is two months early. And I knew a lot of complications that could come with that. And I knew this because during my time of pregnancy, I ha saw a lot of TikToks about babies in NICUs and babies being born early and how small they were. And every time I would get sucked into them and I'd be like, no, I don't wanna watch that anymore. And I'd scroll past because it would scare the living shit out of me. And little did I know that would freaking be my life. But um, I ended up, going back to my story, right? I ended up crying in my car because I had all of these fears and I'm just like really holding on, shaking the whole time. My sister ends up meeting me at the hospital and my sister's very strong and she's been there for me for, you know, forever, but she's not really one to cry often. And so when she saw me in the state that I was, she like sat next to me and she was crying and she was like, I'm really sorry you're going through this and she, I'm, I'm crying right now because I just remember everything that's coming up for me. But, and uh, I was just shaking really badly and I could not stop my tremors for the life of me. And now I've never actually experienced anxiety like this, like shaking anxiety like this. One, it was only one other time when I was like in high school and I smoked weed and like, yeah, it gave me tremors. And so this was like, you know, conscious tremors, but it was like, I couldn't consciously stop my body from shaking. No matter who I was talking to, what I was doing, it was a constant shake and 
yeah it just wouldn't stop and I could tell that she knew that I wanted to stop so badly because I, I was outwardly saying it I'm like I'm just sorry I can't stop shaking like I don't know what's going on and now I understand looking back at you know little Dakota nine month nine months ago Dakota that like you get into this when you okay when you're scared and you go through these traumatic experience, your body automatically will go into fight, flight, freeze, flop, funny, you know, all of the, the F words. And you don't get the decision in those moments to say, hey, I don't want to, I don't want to freeze right now. I want to do this. I don't want to do this right now. I want to do this. Right. And so I didn't understand it at that time, but that's how my body was coping with the trauma. And I understand it now and you know I appreciate my body for helping me in those moments but at that time it was like what the fuck like can I just calm the fuck down because not only am I shaking to my core it's like the doctors are telling me if you don't calm down and if your blood pressure doesn't calm down you can have a seizure and you can die or you know you we can go through the whole thing and they didn't say you could die but they said that you could have a seizure and in my head I thought so I could die and I just remember being super scared in all of those moments, especially when they told me about the seizures and which created more shaking. But the first thing they did for me was give me what is called magnesium. And yes, I'm sure you've heard it before. It's magnesium, like you can take over the counter, but this is like a large dose. And how it makes you feel is as if you have like an extreme flu. And if you've ever had the flu or ever been super, super sick, you know you feel like dog shit. <laughs> you know you can't get up, your head hurts, you feel just like icky and achy and nasty. And they had to put me on that in order to get my blood pressure down. That is what they give you when you're pregnant, that's just what they had to give me. And at that time too, I just don't know what questions to ask, don't know what to say yes and no for for my body, don't know you know, I just don't know anything. And it kind of goes back to like my understanding of who I am. Like I really got to know, I really need to know what I'm doing before I do it to feel super confident in it. So if I'm going to teach something to someone or explain my story to someone, I really need to dive deep into who I am and why I went through that process and how to do it specifically. And then I'm able to talk on it or speak on it or teach on it. That's just who I am. And so I think a lot of that came within like this anxiety filled life for me during this time because it was like pregnancy was not something I got to research before I did it. It was just something I got pushed into. And for once in my life, it was something that I got pushed into without really any knowledge of it beforehand, right? And so I think that's what created a lot of the stress and anxiety within me. And again, I was going through that same pressures during my birth. And so when they told me they would have to give me medications and all of that, it was a lot of like, okay, I got to do what I got to do because I don't know what fucking questions to ask here. And not are they, they're not giving me other, um, other options here. They're just telling me, Hey, we're going to give you this. And so my only option is to say, okay, if it's going to get me not to have seizures, right? Like that's your only option. Like in those moments, I'm not thinking what other options either. So yeah, so that was another anxiety filled thing for me. I was just taking things that were making me feel like shit. And not only was I on magnesium once, I was on it, I think three or four times in total because of how high my blood pressure was. But um, they first test me or put it in me and I just remember feeling like shit. And, and I was like that for a while. And they ended up telling me like, look, we're just going to try to get your blood pressure down. And then um, if you're good, we can send you home and then you'll come back home, come back whenever, you know, you're actually ready to have the baby because my body wasn't ready. It was just my blood pressure was high and the placenta with preeclampsia was fighting my body. So that was why my blood pressure was high. And so I was just like, okay, you know, I'll go along with whatever they're doing. And so um, they told me that and I got kind of excited it was like a small glimpse of hope I was like okay you know maybe I can get my blood pressure down and if I do that then I can go home and just have a semi-normal birth because this is way too early I don't know what the fuck is going on and yeah I just am not cool with this situation as I don't think anyone would be and so I just tried to hold on to that glimpse of hope which was to go home and have a regular birth and I didn't end up really 
getting that because they ended up telling me that my blood pressure wouldn't go down. They put me on magnesium, like I said, like three more times. And then they finally got to this point where they were like, um, they're like, hey, you know, you're doing really bad. <laughs> this is pretty much how they put it. They're like, hey, you're doing really bad. So we're gonna go ahead and induce you because we don't want anything to happen to you or your baby. And so I'm like, yet again, in the situation where I'm like, okay, yeah, like I don't have options, right? Like I would rather not die on this damn table. And I'm just trying to be raw and honest with you guys because this is truly how I was feeling. But I did not say any of this at the time to anybody but my internal thoughts and feelings, not even to Fred, because I think it's taken me a long time to even process what I really was thinking, doing and feeling at that time. But now I'm understanding. And so, yeah, they wanted to induce me. And my first thought was like, what the fuck is inducing? I don't even know what that is because I still, again, wanted to do all this research beforehand. And I just knew from what I saw on TikTok that getting induced wasn't good for your baby and wasn't good for you. And so I knew that initially I never wanted to be induced. And when they told me I needed to for the safety of myself and my baby, then I knew that I didn't have an option and nor did they give me any other options. Not only that, they told me that I was gonna get Pitocin, which apparently is one of the shittiest things that you can take to be induced, that it just makes you feel really shitty. But yet again, I didn't have other options. They just told me what I was going to be taking. And so I went along with it. And I just remember calling my mom in those moments because my mom wasn't there yet. Um, she did end up coming and surprising me, which I appreciate her so much because we all want our moms in situations like that. Unless you're not close to you with your mom, but you know, you want your closest people around you during hard times. And I'm just really grateful she came. But anyway, she told me, my mom's a very blunt person. She's kind of like me, but, and she means well. I just don't think she thought about what she was saying before she says it, which she often does. I love you, mom, if you're listening to this and I'm sorry, but this is the truth. But she was like, oh my gosh, they're giving you Pitocin? That shit is so horrible. Like, that was the, the shit they gave me and it was the worst thing I ever went through. And it was just like, mom, this isn't the shit I need to be hearing right now. You're making me stress the fuck out. And so, yeah, it just made me more stressed when she told me all that. I didn't say anything to her. I was just like, okay, you know, whatever. Um, like, what can I do, right? They're, they already gave it to me. So I just waited around um, and Fred was with me at this time. I, I guess I'm kind of skipping all over the place and I apologize. I just, again, really haven't told the story in a long time, but he ended up coming that same day that I first got admitted. Mind you, I was at the hospital for, I think, seven days in total, but he came the first day and he was just a little late, but my sister was waiting with me most of the time. And um, so he was there when I took the Pitocin and he was there with me the rest of the time as well. So that fear did get covered. He was with me and I didn't give birth yet. Um, but anyway, I took the Pitocin and I just remember waiting around with Fred. My blood pressure was kind of high. They have to monitor the baby. And so they had um, almost like a sonogram thing like on my belly the whole time, like hearing her heartbeat. And there was points where like they would come in and check. They're like, oh, her heartbeat's going down. And I'm like, oh, um, are you sure? Like, let me just remove these because I think I like moved a little bit. Like, I, I don't think you're hearing it correctly. I'm like, okay. So they did that about two or three more times. And they finally were like, huh, something doesn't seem right. Um, we're, I'm going to call your doctor because I'm a little nervous for you we're going to um, see what we're gonna have to do because if the baby's heart rate is dropping, we're gonna have to give you an emergency C-section. <sighs> and I just remember thinking, oh, okay. Like again, another thing I didn't have an option for. And I was just like, like what the fuck, you know? Like I, I didn't, first off, I didn't wanna be in here 30 weeks pregnant. I mean, yeah, thirty at 30 weeks pregnant. Second off, I didn't want to be alone. Third off, I didn't want to be taking Pitocin and getting induced. I wanted to have my child naturally. Not naturally as in no epidural because I always said yes to epidural. And if you don't agree with that, I'm sorry, but I wasn't trying to feel the pain. And pain was like one of my biggest and scariest feelings during that time. That was something I didn't want to experience during birth. I did not want to experience pain. And so um, she was telling me that I had to be uh, checked in with my doctor and then she would get back to me and so and I'm losing my train of thought here but she said that and that I would get a c-section right and so I just remember thinking like 
oh great, another thing on my list that I didn't want to be doing. And so she ended up leaving and coming back and kind of how this part goes is she, Fred was sleeping on the couch and it's already been like the day four or five, I think it was that I had been there like back and forth on magnesium because my blood pressure wouldn't go down. So this was like an ongoing process. I had been moved from a couple rooms and they just always thought I was gonna end up going home and I never ended up going home because my blood pressure wouldn't show the fuck out. And so, yeah, she ended up leaving the room and coming back in with another nurse and they were like, you're gonna have a C-section. And I believe this was like, oh goodness, I can't even remember. I don't know the times, okay? I will tell you, I was so drugged up during this time that I do not know the times. I don't know really what was going on full time. The days felt like hours and but the days also felt like years. It was like, when am I going to get out of this hospital? Like, it, it's hard to explain, but like, I was so drugged up a lot of the time that I don't remember everything word for word. But really, I just want to let you know how I felt during that time. And when they told me like, okay, you're going to have a C-section, I bawled my eyes out, shaking really badly. And at this time when they were giving me Pitocin and stuff, I was still shaking here and there. That never really stopped but it wasn't as frequent as when I first entered the hospital. So I think it really had to do with a lot of my high blood pressure, my body trying to figure it all out. So during this time, immediately when they told me I was gonna have a C-section, it went back to like extreme shaking. And <clears throat> I remember having to wake Fred up because he was sleeping and I was just like, oh God, okay, here we go. <laughs> the one nurse was behind me about to push my bed and the other nurse was in front of me about to also pushed my bed, but he was in the front end. And I just was like, I'm sorry, can I just take a second? And I just like was bawling my eyes out. And um, I just remember they're like, they were just really nice and sweet. And you know, through my whole experience, I'm really glad that I had very nice nurses because peop some people don't. Some people have a horrible experience. And the fact that I had nurses around me who felt I felt as if they cared for me even though you know obviously they didn't know me but they are nurses but I felt like they truly cared for my well-being and that felt really good to me not only that but when I did have any questions that came up for me they were there to answer them 100% and if they didn't know the answer they would go find out the answer kind of thing which I 100% um really appreciate I remember as well to go back to that C-section, I will get back there, but let me just explain what I wanted to explain initially. Um, that there was this one nurse and she was also a midwife, she had told me. And she had told me that she also had preeclampsia and that she only had preeclampsia with her last child and her other kids, she didn't. And that this thing that I'll, I'll never forget that she said this, she was like, a lot of women think that this is their fault and that they could have ate healthier or worked out more or done better mentally. They're like, she was like, this is not your decision. No matter what you did, couldn't have changed the outcome. And I needed to hear that so badly in those moments because I truly felt like my body failed me. I felt like I failed me. I felt like I did everything wrong and this was the reason why I was going through all of this shit. And like, I put all this pressure on myself. And you know, sometimes I still do, if I'm being honest, sometimes I forget that like, truly, it is not my fault that I went through this. And I was meant to go through it. And maybe it's, I was meant to go through it to share my freaking story like I am now. But her telling me that was like a giant wake up call of like, now I won't even say wake up call. It was a huge weight lifted off my shoulders because I felt like, wow, she's right you know like or at least i know she's right now she's a nurse and she's telling me that i, I couldn't have ate healthier or done anything better for myself like the placenta was the one fighting my body like i had no choice in that i could have not to have stopped that like that was way the way my birth was going to go and having that clarity really did help me in those times being of being like inside the hospital and just kind of waiting it out at that point i guess taking magnesium going back and forth and so I really appreciated that nurse a lot. And all that to say, a lot of my nurses were just great and very helpful and I'm very, very thankful for them. Now going back to the C-section, um, they were wheeling me out and they put you into the operation room 
and Fred is with me at this time. Actually, Fred couldn't be with me right then and there. He had to get ready to go in. And they had to give me the epidural and I was by myself and I just remember being like, fuck, like this is another thing I didn't want to be doing by myself, taking an epidural by myself. Again, I always wanted to take an epidural, just not alone. And I was also like, I don't know, I feel like when you're having, and I could be projecting, right? But to me, I feel like when you're having um, contractions, like you're not really thinking about something that's going up your spine and in your back. I'm talking about the epidural if you don't know what it is. Maybe look it up if you want to, if you're pregnant. If not, then yeah, I don't wanna go too much into detail, but it's pretty much a giant needle going into your back and into your spine, actually. And so I didn't wanna be doing that alone, but I just, I also was like really consciously aware. And I feel like if you had contractions at that time, you're more focused on the pain than you are like this thing that's going in your back. But for me, it was like, I was so afraid because I had no other pain to think about. Like I was actually fine. They just were about to put a giant ass needle in my back. And when they did it, actually, I was completely fine. It didn't hurt at all. Like it was a little like weird feeling, but I don't know. I don't know why people say that thing hurts because for me personally and everyone's experience is, are valid and different. I'm sorry. But for me personally, it did not hurt at all. And I was consciously aware of everything going on and not feeling other pains. And so after they, I, they got that in me, um, my body went numb and Fred came in and we just waited for the doctor to cut me open and get the baby out. And I just remember laying there on the table while they're operating <laughs> operating on me, I will say, because a C-section is one of the biggest and most, I think like, um, I don't know. It's one of the biggest surgeries that you can do. I don't know what other word I was looking for, but it's also a scary surgery. Like you go through many layers through your body and a lot of people just chuck it up to, hey, it's just a C-section. Women do it every day. And yes, that is true, but also like, it is a very invasive surgery. That's the word I was looking for. It's a very invasive surgery. And so I was scared, you know, I'm sitting there and like, you can't feel anything, but like some tugging and pulling, which feels very odd by the way. But as I was laying there, they um, got the baby out. And I just remember thinking like, first off, there was all this pressure that lifted from my body. But second off, I was just like, where are her cries? Where are her cries? And I waited and waited for her cries. And finally she did let out a little one and they said that she was okay. And they rushed her to the NICU. And I asked her how much, I asked them how much she weighed and they said two pounds, 11 ounces. And man, you know, like I was 30 weeks pregnant and I gained a lot of weight. So I thought, you know, part of it might've been my baby, but my baby was so small that I was like, huh, weird. Like it was just me gaining all this weight. But obviously I know I'm just joking. Like it was part of the placenta and stuff, but, but yeah, I was just like very shocked that she was so tiny. Um, but after that, they then i sewed me back up and i it's kind of a blur from there because they put me in the room i didn't get to see harper they initially take her to the nicu right and so i don't get to hold my baby firsthand i don't get to do any of the first time mom things that i was looking so forward to and yet it was another first that i didn't get and it really does tear me apart because man, I just wanted that so deeply, right? You want to hold your child as soon as they come out of you and you want to hear their cries or try to like breastfeed or feed them for the first time. You want all these firsts to happen. And I feel like because I had preeclampsia, all of those firsts were ripped away from me. And it's, and it's heavy and it's deep. And I'm sorry that I keep crying on this damn episode, but I'm just trying to be as raw and as honest with you guys as I can. But that was another thing that I felt like I didn't get in this pregnancy, um, in this birth. And yeah, so that was very heavy for me too. But they wheeled me into the room. And as I'm on um, the epidural, they also told me I needed to go back on magnesium because my blood pressure was still high. And man, this part was the serious for me. I truly felt like I might die. And there were moments in all of this where I felt like I could pass away because before they even induced me with the Pitocin and all of that, I was actively trying to get my like hormones and blood pressure down and everything down. Like I was 
meditating like three times like every hour like really trying to calm myself down because i was still shaking too like and i knew having anxiety can increase your blood pressure as well so i was truly just trying to be in the now and try to calm myself down with all these meditations and i was listening to music and there was this one song specifically and i don't remember what it's called or what the artist's name is but it's on my phone um and maybe i could put it in the show notes or something i don't know if you're even allowed to do something like that but there's this part of the song where it says i'm asking god to please give me another day and that's literally how i feel like my whole seven days went it was like i was asking god to just like please give me more time because i was so afraid that i was really going to lose my life and i knew preeclampsia was really um pretty serious because obviously all the things that you can see on google and which can lead to death but my sisters one of my sisters like um good friends in high school their sister recently passed away from preeclampsia and so like that was kind of fresh on my mind too so it was just like wow is this like is this the end for me like is this is this the last part that i get to enjoy in this life like do i meet my dad here like there was just so many questions i had and i continue to have those questions i guess but i mean i continue to have those questions but coming back from the operating table oh gosh i'm so sorry guys that this episode is so heavy <laughs> but um getting back to the <laughs> operating table this part was really scary for me because they gave me that magnesium again and like my like <laughs> they seem to be fine but like in my brain i was like i don't know what's going on because i kept losing my breath like i couldn't catch my breath and i'd fall asleep in the moment i would fall asleep i would be gasping for air like it was like going back and forth and i just remember fred being right next to my bed holding my hand the whole time because i was so afraid about what was going on and i thought like i was literally gonna lose my life in these moments because I could not breathe and it's scary when you can't breathe they gave me like an oxygen mask and I kept having to sit up because like I felt so like yeah just like weighed down because I still felt the epidural on my legs which like you can't move your body I couldn't at least and I don't know if it's just because like I was so drugged up or what but like I couldn't move the bottom half of my body so I was freaking out about that I felt itchy AF like I don't know if everyone feels itchy on ep epidural or the magnesium or whatever but like man i could not stop itching my body itching my nose just like itching everywhere and like then i couldn't feel my legs and then i felt like i couldn't breathe and so like in these moments it felt so heavy and i just felt like oh my gosh like i am going to die here like i this is the time this is where it wasn't after i it wasn't before i had my baby it was gonna be after and so like that was just my thought process but finally all of that shit wore off and i was fine and not, not fine like oh good good to go i can leave but i was like better right like i wasn't feeling all those feelings and so i felt really good about that but um i mean i kept having to get on magnesium i still hadn't seen my baby and um i don't know if it was the second day or the first day and I feel really guilty about not knowing which day I really got to see her, but I just remember asking and asking to see her. But because I had my C-section, how they explained it was the NICU doesn't know how to deal with adults. They know how to deal with babies. And so if you faint or if anything happens down there that they cannot control, they'll freak out and it will be like a whole deal. And so they told me, we need to make sure that you're strong and steady and that you can get up and walk around and you know do all the things that you need to do before you go see your baby and it was just like man I was pushing and pushing myself I was trying to stand up do all of the things like I was trying to push a poop out because they say you're supposed to like fart or poop and I thought it was poop so I kept trying to do that and too much information maybe I'm sorry but I was really just trying to do all the things to speed up my process I was trying to walk as much as I could even though I was in excruciating pain because c-sections like man I'm sorry if you have to go through one or if you end up going through one, but just trying to have as much support as you can around you during the, that time after birth because man, it's just, it's really hard and it's hard to get up and it's hard to walk around and I just couldn't believe how strong other women have been who have gone through this 
And I also felt all this remorse and guilt about not being there for my friends who, friends and family who did go through a C-section because man, this was the worst pain I'd ever been in. And I just felt really guilty because yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't there for them. And so yeah, just have support if you can. But anyway, so I was pushing myself to see my daughter and finally when they let me see her, <sighs> When they finally let me see her, I got to get wheeled down there and she was just so tiny. She was so tiny and she was in this incubator and I wasn't fully able to like hold her or anything. They don't let you hold them because they're all wrapped up in tubes and their nose and on their head and they have to get oxygen because they came out too early and obviously they're tiny, right? So they're like, they're, their body's still trying to um, grow as if they were in mom's belly and so the incubator allows them to kind of be like if they were in mom's belly obviously with our help but um i just remember looking at her and being like wow she's just so small and my sister and my mom just kept saying like oh she's so beautiful you did so good you did a great job and i just remember being like what do you mean <laughs> Like she's out here early because of me. Like my body failed me. I failed me. Like I, I could have done more. Like I just felt so heavy around that. I felt like it was all of my fault and that I was the reason my baby was having to go through all of this stuff. And I felt really disconnected from her, which was another thing I felt so guilty about. And I didn't know how to like show my affection at that time I just remember when my sisters and my mom told me like she was beautiful and I did so good like all I could do was like stare at her and look at them like it like uh, okay like what like how what am I not seeing like what what do I not feel and again another first taken away because I felt like when you first have your baby you're supposed to feel this like just like this big like moment you know this big moment of happiness and like wow this is what I'm living for and I love this thing and this means so much to me but it was like yet another part where I was just so disconnected in what I was doing which honestly kind of feeds back into my pregnancy too I felt so disconnected with her as well and I tried you know I tried at times to be connected with her in, in my womb but like now she was outside and I thought this is where I would really be able to connect and I did not feel it one bit and I feel I still feel guilty by saying that because now I love her so much and like she's the best thing that's ever freaking happened to me and I just like she's so cute and I just she's my everything right but it's like during those moments I didn't feel anything it was just like I was numb and I honestly feel like I felt that way because of everything that I had just went through. I wasn't able to process anything. And I just remember, because Danielle was still uh, talking to me during this time, like the one thing I, I could tell her was like, it's just like I can't catch my fucking breath. I couldn't catch it. And I just felt like I couldn't process any of it. And I feel like up until this point, guys, that I haven't been able to process it either. Like, really catch my breath and think about every portion and like feel and heal all of those things in me and so I just thank you so much for being here and listening to my story because man like it is really healing right now like I feel lighter and just explaining everything that I went through like in detail and all my feelings and thoughts and emotions it just feels really great to have you guys here for me and yeah I really really freaking appreciate you and um, there's more to my story, but it kind of goes more into my postpartum, but I did have to stay with Harper in that NICU for a whole month and we didn't stay in the NICU because, you know, we're in the same city as the hospital, but, um, we would just drive there every day and man, that was just like so heavy on me too, because, you know, you want to take your baby home. That was another first I didn't get and... You want to be able to you know be there for your child like initially you want to care for them you want to do all the caring for when they're home and when you're with them but it was like I didn't even really feel like a mom or a bond yet because even though I finally did get to hold her it was just very like it felt good to hold her I wanted to cry don't get me wrong but it also felt like oh 
first I gotta ask to hold her now. I gotta ask to hold her every time. I can't just pick up my baby when I wanna pick up my baby. I have to ask a nurse if I can untangle all of these things and, and give her to me. Like, this is my baby. Like, it was another thing that was like taken away from me. And there was more times like that. And I just remember like, throughout the whole NICU stay, it was just so heavy because it was like, I was trying to be so strong for my daughter that I wasn't able to process all these things because I didn't want to let these emotions affect how I was doing as a mother and as a person during that time because I am such a person who never wants people to see that I'm doing bad even when I am because I feel like I don't know it's taken me a long time just to be able to be okay with my emotions and feelings it's things that I grew up with in myself um grew up in my family is what I meant to say with myself and so it was a lot of like, don't cry, you're being a crybaby like type of thing. And I think if you've heard our last episodes and podcast, or, or sorry, last season, you'll understand what I'm talking about. But yeah, I came from a very like, you're a crybaby fan, you're a crybaby girl. And I didn't want to show those emotions for very long. I am still fighting that. I, I think that healing from all of those things are still an uphill battle, you know, all of a roller coaster, but I just remember trying to be so strong for Harper and I wanted to be strong for Fred and for everyone who was seeing me do the things I had to do to get up and go see my baby every day. I just remember everyone would tell me like, I can't believe you're doing that. Like that just seems so hard. Like that seems so uh, like exhausting. Like I wouldn't be able to do that. Like that would be really hard for me. And like during that time, it was like, I couldn't even let my brain go there because if I let my brain go there, I would be sunk back in and I couldn't allow that to happen. I wanted to be a good mom for Harper. I wanted to be the mom that she needed in that time and she needed me. She was a tiny itty bitty thing growing in this incubator. And man, let me tell you something though. Sure was she strong. She was so strong from the moment that we got her out of my belly. And even before that, she survived everything that I went through too, you know, like she she has been with me from and, and through all of it like she has been the one who is inside of me and i really feel extremely guilty that she got to experience all of the feelings that i felt but i am also really grateful that she was there with me because i needed her as much as she needed me and i feel like that's pretty empowering she's my everything and man like our connection did grow and we got really bonded as time went on but um, I did show up to the NICU almost every day and I was pumping during that time because I can't breastfeed, she was too small. And that right there was taking a lot out of me as well, but I was just trying to be the best mom that I could be because I already felt like I was failing. But then she, I wasn't producing enough. Obviously I was early and um, yeah, I was early. She wasn't actually on my nipples, so like, when a baby is on your nipple, your body can tell whether or not you need to be produ producing more or less. But because I was just pumping, my body doesn't really know. Also, the saliva of your baby and everything really changes your whole milk production. And so I didn't have that. And I feel like if I would have had that, I could have maybe uh, kept up with her supply, but I couldn't. So I ended up having to give her donor milk, which was another thing I didn't really want to do, but had to do it, which I'm grateful. You know, I said yes, because I just wanted... A fed baby is best is what I'm trying to get at. Any any kind of fed. So like breast milk, breast milk or formula, right? And I was okay with that. Or someone else's breast milk. That's okay too. And so they ended up giving her someone else's breast milk and eventually formula. But she did really good. And after 30 days, we got to take her home. Which seems like not that long to me because a lot of NICU stays can be much longer. But... Um, but yeah, I was just really grateful it was 30 days because I remember that the, the nurse would come in and she would tell me that um, that I, you know, maybe not be able to take her home for longer than that because a lot of the time parents will get their like hopes up and then they don't get to take their, their, their kid home. But um, yeah, we got to take her home in 30 days. So that is a bright side of our story because even though she did go into the NICU, it was faster than what we were made to believe and so she did really good and she's just been really freaking strong since the beginning i guess i didn't really explain how i got out of the hospital but honestly i went back on magnesium a couple times and then i finally got out <laughs> was finally free 
uh, and they just worked with me, you know, but I really tried to just muster up the strength to be the mom and the person that I wanted to be for my daughter and for the people around me and the people who loved me and cared me and, and was watching over me because during that time I had to let my guard down and be vulnerable and ask, you know, other people to send me prayers and hope and just send me love and care because I was afraid that I was genuinely going to leave, like lose this life and leave this earth and I didn't think I was ready and it was just so much like gratitude that I feel like came out of all of it too I was just very grateful to be there and yeah and I'm actually really grateful to be here too and I am grateful you know even though I went through uh, hell it seems right um I'm just really grateful I get to tell my story to people who may need it and just know that again that your feelings are valid and what you went through is valid no matter big or strong big or strong what the heck big or small you are strong and you are resilient and i am here for you if you want to talk about whatever it is because i know it's heavy and i know it's hard but i am here for you and i will have this conversation with you and i will be ears wide open just to be here arms wide open for you too and i really really again appreciate all you guys being here for me too because Man, this was actually really healing. I, I'm now that I'm done with the podcast, right? I really appreciate you being here for me. And yeah, I'll never get to share my gratitude with you enough because I just yeah, it's a real like again, weights lifted off my shoulders. So thank you so much for being here. And in the next episode, Danielle will be going through her lighter birth story. So hang hang in and tune in for that. I love you guys. Thank you so much. Please leave us a review and share this episode if you know if you feel like someone needs it. Um, and again, just let them know that I'm here for them just as much as you guys are here for me. So thank you. Bye guys. See you next episode. Or you know, after that. <laughs>